As the frightening trends continue, both hate crimes and anti-Semitism, without a doubt, on the rise in America. The FBI report late last year showed that there was a 23% spike in religion-based hate crimes and a 37% rise in anti-Semitic attacks across America. And while it's either easy to either associate or dismiss those increases to the rise of Donald Trump, it should be noted that a Washington Post study found a jaw-dropping 226% increase in hate crimes in counties that hosted a Trump rally during the 2016 campaign. Now, allies of the president, they've tried to counter that correlation with prominent conservatives, including Ted Cruz and Meghan McCain, blaming or referencing Minnesota Congresswoman Ian Omar as a contributor to the resurgence of anti-Semitism in America. So for more, we now turn to Cong Georgetown University law professor Frederick Lawrence. It should be noted that Professor Lawrence is the author of Punishing Hate, Bias Crimes Under American Law, and also is his testimony to Congress that played a key role in the drafting of the nation's current hate crime laws. Professor, I appreciate the time, albeit on such an unwelcome a topic, but it's beginning to feel all too familiar. Let's first start off because you were integral in making hate crimes um, a distinction with a difference when it comes to law. This wasn't some guy who just shot someone on a street corner. He targeted a population uh, and he did it for a reason. Explain how this is different from just a regular crime, why it's a hate crime. Hate crimes are different, Rich, for three different reasons. One is the impact even on the individual victims is different. These are people who weren't just victimized because of where they were or what they were doing, but because of who they are. It's, it's a kind of spirit murdering. If you think about somebody bumping into you by accident as opposed to bumping into you on purpose, that's a very small example. Now take it all the way up to the level of acts of violence because somebody's stealing your wallet as opposed to somebody with an act of violence because of your religion, because of your race. So it, it hits you individually in a very different way. But that's only one way in which hate crimes are different. Hate crimes also affect the entire target community. I, I can tell you that there are synagogues all over this country that will be feeling differently this coming Shabbat because of what happened in San Diego. People who've never even been to San Diego and who couldn't find that congregation on a map feel as if they themselves have been victims. Not just that they feel sorry for the victims, but they themselves were victims. So there's a target community harm as well. And then finally, and the one that we're all talking about now, is that the entire society in a multicultural society like ours is affected differently because there's, there's a tear along those lines that connect us or sometimes tragically divide us. So a crime like this is not just a violation of the social contract that we ought to treat one another decently, but the very special social contract that knits together this very diverse society. Now this is just my two cents, um, but this didn't happen in a vacuum. Um, and while every person is responsible for the own actions they take, to me, what I have seen in Pittsburgh, what we've seen here, it, people feel validated when they do these things. That not just there's other people who feel this way, but at the Charlottesville, I was shocked at the amount of loons out there um, who felt that they were speaking for them. And when they weren't condemned universally, somehow, some way, that sent a message um, that they weren't alone with these crazy thoughts. Is it unfair to say that this starts with the top? Look, I think the, the, the fact is there is no neutral position on these crimes. To say nothing is tacitly to refrain from condemning. It requires the strongest, clearest kind of condemnation, and not just condemnation that a bad thing happened, but identification for what it is. You alluded earlier to the involvement I had in hate crime law. Part of it is the significance of labeling something as a hate crime, labeling what it is and labeling the cause of it. The fact is that the vast majority of deaths from acts of hate crimes in this country come from what I would call domestic terrorism from white nationalism right now. So that's not the only cause, but it's the major cause, and it has to be identified, and it has to be labeled. It's interesting to me that, that the person uh, allegedly, uh, the cause in, in San Diego, connects himself with Pittsburgh 
connects himself with New Zealand. So he sees it as a whole pattern. And there's a reason for that. He, he would otherwise, in a pre-social media world, he might just be kind of a loner off on his own. Instead, he feels like he's part of a whole community. So it is, it is critically important for everyone, but as you say, from the top on down, uh, to roundly identify it for what it is and criticize it without qualification. And, and to me, at least, um, I know we're at a certain point in society where people believe they can say things without consequence, the more shocking, the more uh, followers you'll get or whatever else. But it wasn't just Charlottesville where there were, quote unquote, good people on both sides. It's labeling an entire continent as full of s-hole people that if they are brown and south of the border, they're murderers and rapists. It's not just stray phrases. Um, it's that it, the Steve Kings of the world from Iowa and the rest all of a sudden feel that they're not alone in the corner of a room, that there's other people who feel like them. And I, I've had a hard time communicating maybe, but to me there is a real danger when you are given a microphone and people listen to you and you say these reckless things. You can't turn around later and say, oh, I condemn the actions in San Diego. I'm sure no one wanted that to happen, but nonetheless, Somebody lit the flame here. Well, and look, and I also think that it's incumbent upon all, and I would say the President of the United States ought to say that no one should be doing this who thinks he's a supporter of mine. He ought to make it as clear as possible because he speaks to a lot of people and a lot of people listen to him. And I think it's a very important opportunity for him to say loud and clear, this is not in my name. I disassociate myself from this completely. Not disassociate is not strong enough. I condemn it in unqualified terms. Finally, Professor, you get this sinking suspicion that uh, we have the copycat nature of this, uh, the attention that's been paid to this as well. Clearly, people are watching 24-hour news channels, um, and they're going on sites here where they're being, if not emboldened. To that end, tell me, give me some reason why I shouldn't think this is going to get worse before it gets better. Well, I don't know about worse, but I don't think it's over, if that's your question. I, I think the problem is uh, through social media, through all the ways in which people feel connected, knit together in this kind of a sick anti-social network, uh, there's every reason to think that there will be more of this. Uh, and, it, and it stops when people of good faith make clear that whether they're liberal or conservative, young or old, Democrat or Republican, there is a place where a civilized society draws the line. And it's not just acts of violence. Obviously, we all condemn acts of violence. Hate crimes represents a tear in the very fabric of this country. And that's why we feel it the way we do. That's why you and I are talking about this. There are a lot of crimes in this country over the past week we're not talking about those. It's not that they aren't tragic as well. There's something different about this. We feel a tear right along the lines in our society. And if we don't address that and address that firmly and uniformly and quickly, then I think it gets worse before it gets better. Professor Frederick Lawrence, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much.